In this video, we're going to be talking about gas ignition systems. So, the purpose of ignition system is to light a burner safely and monitor the system for continued safe operation. An ignition system is controlled by a furnace ignition control module. There are four types of ignition systems used in gas furnaces today. We have a standing pilot ignition. We have an intermittent pilot ignition. We have a direct spark ignition. And we have a hot surface ignition. The standing pilot ignition system is one of the oldest out there. A pilot light or a pilot flame is a small flame located near the furnace's gas burners that provide the initial heat to ignite the furnace. A standing pilot ignition system consists of a continuously burning pilot that ignites the burners when there's a call for heat. Wired to the ignition control module, a thermocouple, thermopile, or bimetallic element senses if the pilot is lit correctly before allowing the main gas valve to open during a call for heat. So this is an example of a standing pilot with a thermocouple. Okay, you have your pilot flame here. You have a pilot tube, which allows gas to enter for the pilot flame. And you have the sensing element, the thermopile, which is being heated up by the flame. It generates a small amount of voltage to keep the pilot valve open. A thermocouple generates a small electric current, which ri rises and falls based on the amount of heat applied to it. When the pilot is lit, the thermocouple sends a signal that tells the ignition control module to send fuel gas through the gas burner. If the pilot is not lit, the thermocouple sends a signal to the control module to prevent the flow of gas through the gas burner. A system that uses a thermocouple, thermopile, or bimetallic element to sense if the flame light, if the pilot light is on, is referenced to a thermal detection system. Standing pilot furnaces are found only in older equipment. Standing pilot ignition systems have become obsolete due to their inefficiency since it constantly burns gas even during the off cycle. If a pilot fails to light on a furnace that burns natural gas, the gas will rise through the flue and vent outdoors since natural gas is lighter than air. If a propane gas pilot fails to light, the gas can collect in low areas such as crawl spaces and basement. This can create a highly explosive gas and can cause suffocation in those areas due to the lack of air. If an odor is present, gas is present. Be very careful with standing gas pilots and propane. Because when you reach down to light that pilot light that's out, you may be actually putting flame into a puddle of propane. The next type is the intermittent pilot ignition system. An intermittent pilot ignition system burns and monitors its pilot light only when the thermostat is calling for heat. When the furnace is off, the pilot is not lit and the ignition control module does not attempt to sense the pilot. When the furnace calls for heat, the gas valve for the pilot opens, and a spark igniter or hot surface igniter attempts to light the pilot. The ignition module will also begin to try and sense flame using a flame detection device. Once the pilot is lit and detected, the ignition control module opens the gas valve to the gas burners. The gas burners are ignited by the pilot. When the thermostat satisfies, the gas valve closes, stopping gas flow to the pilot and the gas burners. Natural gas may be 100% lockout, but LP gas, that's propane, must be 100% lockout. In other words, you cannot have constant retries on the pilot. Intermittent pilot ignition requires verification that the pilot has been lit before gas can flow to the burners. The ignition control module uses flame rectification or thermal detection to verify the presence of the pilot flame. So that brings up the question, what is flame rectification? Flame rectification is the process of using a pilot flame or gas burner flame to change a small electric current from alternating current to direct current. The flame burns between two electrodes of different sizes. The electrodes can be a grounding strap, a flame hood, a flame rod or sensor. Okay, the flame rod can also be called an ionization electrode or flame electrode and a part of the gas burner. This flame allows electrons to flow in only one direction across the gap between the electrodes. The ignition module then applies a small alternating current to the electrodes. The flame rectifies this current by forcing it to flow in one direction across the gap. 
The module measures the direct current to verify the presence or absence of flame. Flame rectification system reports the presence of a flame immediately. Other ignition systems may use local sensing, which is a combination igniter and sensor. The spark produced by the ignition module can be about 30,000 volts. So this is an intermittent pilot with a grounding strap. Okay, this is a situation where this um, sparker right here acts as both my ignition source and a sensing element. So we create a spark here to the ground that ignites our gas, and then immediately this goes into a flame rectification mode, and it senses the flame between in the gap between the flame between now the flame sensor rod and the ground. Okay, and again, this is just a close-up picture in a furnace of a flame sensor on a pilot spark ignition system. We have our flame sensing rod. We have our intermittent pilot with our spark here, high voltage power wire. We have a gas line. Do not touch any of these components, okay, because the, there's going to be 120 volts on this flame sensing rod while the furnace is in operation. While the furnace is in ignition mode, this high voltage power wire could have up to 30,000 volts on it. Direct spark ignition systems, otherwise known as DSI, uses an electric spark to ignite the gas burners directly. There's no pilot in this system. A spark igniter creates an electric spark across a gap between two electrodes when the ignition control module applies high voltage spark to the electrodes. When the spark occurs, when the current leaps across the gap, the spark is not hot enough to ignite the gas or is hot enough to ignite the gas in the gas burner. When the thermostat calls for heat, there are several things that happen. The gas valve opens to allow gas to flow to, through the manifold to the burners. Also, the ignition system applies a voltage to the electrodes to produce a spark. The spark ignites the gas. The flame produced is then detected by the sensors. If a flame is not produced or is not detected, the system locks out for a given period of time. All direct spark ignition systems, both natural gas and LP, have a lockout function, which stops the system from applying a spark. DSI systems use flame rectification as a means of flame detection, just like intermittent pilot systems. DSI systems may have components that are designed to serve two purposes. For example, a DSI system requires both a flame high voltage electrode and a grounding strap to start the spark and a flame rod and grounding star strap to conduct the current for the flame rectification. Some systems combine the high voltage electrode and the flame rod into a single device. When a system's electrode and flame rod are packaged together, it's known as local sensing. When the electrode and flame rod are separate, it's known as remote sensing. Direct Spark ignition systems have the advantage of being inexpensive, they're rugged, they have long operating life, and they're low maintenance. The disadvantage is that the spark creates an electromagnetic interference, or EMI. EMI is an electrical noise and can disrupt electronics such as the ignition module in the furnace itself. To minimize this, keep electrical cables as short as possible and avoid allowing high voltage wires to run in front of the ignition control module. Common ignition problems are caused from improperly adjusted spark gaps, igniter positioning, and bad grounding. That's a major one right there. If the grounding is not proper, things won't work. Once the main burner is lit, the sparking stops. If it doesn't, the electronic ignition module could be defective. A third, another type of ignition system, and these are becoming the most popular, is the hot surface ignition system. Hot surface ignition systems use a silicon carbide igniter to light the gas burners directly. No pilot is used with this system. The hot surface igniter is a high resistance heating element that produces a, deal of, a great deal of heat when current is passed through. The heat generated by this igniter is hot enough to ignite the gas burners. They are often called glow coils, referring to how they illuminate when conducting electric current. 
So this is just an example of a hot surface igniter. This here connects, this side here with the plug connects to your ignition control module. Okay, when 120 volts is applied to it, this whole glow coil will begin to glow. The HSI system operates similarly to the direct spark ignition system. When the T-STAT calls, the ignition module starts the combustion blower to purge the heat exchanger. After a brief period of time, a voltage is applied to the glow coil. The combustion blower continues to operate while the glow coil heats up. The HSI control module waits before turning the gas on to the burners. Some use a timed relay to wait a specific set period of time. Other systems measure the resistance of the glow coil to determine whether it's hot enough to ignite the gas. The ignition module opens the gas valve to supply gas for ignition when the glow coil is hot enough. Within a few seconds of the valve opening, the glow coil should be de-energized. If the flame sensor does not sense the gas within a few or the flame within a few seconds, the gas valve will close. Some systems will attempt to relight for a limited number of times. HSI systems also have a lockout feature for both natural gas and propane. Once the flame is established through the use of flame rectification, the control module starts the indoor blower after a brief delay. This delay allows for the heat exchanger to warm up. When the thermostat satisfies, it signals the module to close the gas valve and then turn off the combustion blower after a brief period of time. HSI systems require either 24 volts or 120 volts to operate. Smart valves require 24 volts to be applied to the glow coil. So if you see a valve labeled Honeywell Smart Valve, it's going to be 24 volts. All other HSI systems are usually powered with 120 volts. Glow coils are very fragile, they're sensitive to shock, and they're easily broken. Do not touch a hot surface igniter with your hands. The oil in your hands will cause a quick deterioration of the igniter. Okay, this is an example of a broken igniter. You see the white around where the is labeled crack. Okay, this igniter has failed. There's a crack in it right there, even though it still looks like it might be good. This area of white represents an area of overheating, and it has worn out. If you wanted to take an ohm reading across this, you would have an OL or infinite resistance. Normal resistance readings on an HSI is 50 to 400 ohms. The HSI is energized for about 45 seconds. Location is extremely critical. HSI should be placed about three quarters of an inch through the center of the flame. The HSI heats up to between 2400 and 2700 degrees, which is over the ignition temperature of natural gas. If you have repeated failures with an HSI system, look for the following. Higher than normal applied voltage. If voltage is in excess of 125 volts, it will shorten the igniter's life. Be very careful when there's been construction around, accumulation of drywall dust, fiberglass insulation, or sealant residue will prevent proper ignition. Delayed ignition can stress the igniter due to small explosions. Furnace short cycling, as with a dirty filter, may cause the furnace to cycle on and off on high limit. Polarity of the furnace install is critical. If the furnace is hooked up in reverse, for example, neutral to line and line to neutral, it will not work. Grounding is important. The burners must be properly grounded to the ignition control, and the ignition control must be properly grounded to the electrical ground. When you're working on hot surface ignition or any of the ignition modules, even spark ignition, you've got to be very, very careful about ground. There's nothing wrong with adding additional ground wires to tie all the parts together as long as you do it neatly and safely.